Hello and welcome to another TLDR Global video. In this one, we're going to be discussing the recent hostilities emerging from the Middle East in Israel and Palestine. Obviously, this is an incredibly difficult situation to fully understand and is deeply rooted in complex history. So we'll do our best to try and tackle it neutrally. Let us know if you think we've made any mistakes in the comments. Anyway, in this video, we'll try and outline what's happening in Israel and Palestine, the ongoing hostilities and what we can expect to happen next. If you don't already subscribe to the channel, then I'd encourage you to check it out. Not only do we cover topics like this, we also discuss other big issues like the dropping global fertility rate, Ethiopia's ongoing civil war, China's actions in Hong Kong and Israel's elections. So if you want to be more tuned in when it comes to global news and the world around you, then hit subscribe. This week, we've all seen some pretty horrific pictures and news about the destruction and loss of life caused by a recent increase in violence and missile attacks in the Israel-Palestinian region. Before explaining why these attacks happened and what could happen from here, let's go through a very, very brief history of the region and why this contentious conflict exists. While we could go back hundreds of years, we're going to start in the aftermath of the First World War. Previously, the Ottoman Empire had controlled the region, which was populated by a Jewish minority and an Arab majority. However, the Ottoman Empire was defeated in World War I, so Britain, who has a difficult history with defining borders, was instructed by the League of Nations to create a national home for Jews in Palestine. As a result, Britain, until recently, committed itself to this idea in the form of the Balfour Declaration. In part, Jews wanted their own nation, known as Zion, due to rising anti-Semitic persecution in Europe and a growing belief in secular nationalism, as well as due to traditional religious teachings. In the decades that followed World War I, there was a huge influx of Jews to Palestine, with many seeking a homeland, especially after the Holocaust. Violence between the Jews and the Arabs, both who believed the land was theirs, only grew. And by 1947, the British, who were still in control of the region, could no longer contain the violence, and the UN voted to split the land into two countries, Israel and Palestine. As part of this plan, Jerusalem would become an international city, which meant that it was neither part of Israel or Palestine, and would have to be shared by various religious groups who see the city as important. While Israel accepted this plan, the Palestinians didn't, as they saw it as an illegitimate attempt to try and push them out of their own land. This disagreement over the plan led to war, with many Arabic countries intervening, backing Palestine and invading Israel. Due to the war and the creation of Israel, around 750,000 Palestinians were driven from their home, an act that's known as El Nakba by Palestinians, or the catastrophe. By the end of the war, Israel controlled a lot more of the land. According to the proposed partition, Israel was supposed to have 56% of the land, but by the end of the war, they controlled 77% of it. Some of the Arabic states that intervened also gained control of parts of the region, with Jordan now controlling the West Bank and Egypt controlling Gaza. Following the war, a peace agreement was never signed, and both sides, Israel and Palestine, continued to blame the other for the conflict. Then, a couple of decades later, Israel attacked both Egypt and Syria, Arabic nations who fought them back in 48, believing that they were about to invade. During this time, they successfully captured the Sinai region, alongside Gaza from Egypt, the Golan Heights from Syria, and crucially, they also captured the West Bank. Today, these conflicted areas are still key. The West Bank, which includes East Jerusalem, where the Palestinians want their capital to be, and the Gaza Strip. Both areas are home to large Palestinian populations, but since the 1967 war, Israel has either occupied them or they've been under a legal Israeli occupation, depending on your point of view. We should point out that international groups such as the UN and EU referred to both areas as occupied Palestinian territory, and as such, that's the phrase we'll be using for the remainder of this video. So now we understand the history and borders of the region, let's jump forward to today and to three of the major events which led to the conflict we're watching unfold. The Damascus Gates, the evictions and Al-Aqsa Mosque. 
Firstly, in mid-April this year, Palestinians tried to gather at the Damascus Gates, which is usually where Muslims gather during Ramadan. The Israeli police blocked it off and violence ensued. The police claimed this was to maintain order, although many Palestinians saw this as a restriction on their right to assemble. Then, on the 6th of May, a number of Palestinian families were evicted from their homes in Sheikh Shahar, West Jerusalem, by Israeli authorities. This was despite many generations having lived there. In fact, the region had been used by Palestinian refugees ever since the catastrophe in 1948. This eviction was backed up by the Israeli county court, though, and was set to escalate to Israel's Supreme Court, but this was postponed. Despite the delay, these evictions still led to Palestinian protests, ultimately leading to clashes between the Israeli police and protesters, in which the police were criticised for using rubber bullets and tear gas. The following day at Al-Aqsa Mosque, which sits in the occupied Palestinian territory of East Jerusalem, violence broke out between police and Palestinian worshippers once again. It's unclear how the violence started, but videos shared online show worshippers throwing rocks, shoes and chairs at police, and officers firing stun grenades and rubber bullets. In response, Hamas, the de facto Palestinian governing authority of Gaza, issued an instruction to Israel, remove the Israeli forces from the mosque by 6pm on the 10th of May. Minutes after the deadline passed, 150 rockets were sent into Israel from Gaza. This was something that the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu claimed was a red line, and in response, Israel launched airstrikes into Gaza. The missile strikes continued to escalate for the following days, and at the time of writing, seven people in Israel have died and 83 in Gaza. It's also important to note here that the reason the Israeli death count has been so much lower is because of the Iron Dome system. This is the air defence system Israel uses to intercept missiles fired at them, and it's a defence system that Palestine doesn't have. Moreover, following this exchange of missiles between Israel and Palestine, it was reported on the 13th of May that the Israeli army were putting forward plans for a ground invasion of Gaza, claiming that they were preparing for all eventualities and an escalation. Then, early on Friday morning, the Israeli military briefed claiming that their air and ground troops were currently attacking in the Gaza Strip. This was seen as confirmation that the Israelis had invaded. However, an hour later, the Israeli army claimed that there was an internal communication error and issued a clarification that there are currently no IDF ground troops inside the Gaza Strip. IDF air and ground defences are carrying out strikes on targets in the Gaza Strip. The conflict at the time of writing doesn't seem to be headed towards a swift conclusion. Israel is on the border of Gaza, and it's been reported that around 7,000 Israeli reservists have been called up, as well as all leave being cancelled for combat units. Certainly, it does not seem from the Israeli perspective that there are any plans to back down soon. On the other side of things, however, Palestine has made clear that they'd be open to sign a reciprocal peace treaty, on the condition that the international community ensures that there's no Israeli military presence at the Al-Aqsa Mosque. Considering that Israel is currently considering a ground invasion of Gaza, it seems unlikely that a ceasefire will be called in the coming days. That's how things stand at the moment, though, and obviously things are even more complicated and messier than we've implied. As always, there's links to some of our sources in the description if you want to read further. For more updates on this story and others, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. A special thanks to our Patreon backers who make videos like this one possible, and if you want to see your name at the end of videos, then you too can back us on Patreon. The link to that is in the description.